my going on. I feel like going on. The trials, they're gonna come on every hand. I feel like going on. Oh, I feel like pressing my way. I feel like pressing my way the trials they are gonna come on every hello I feel like oh we Oh. 
Hallelujah. I feel like going on. Do you feel like going on today? Hallelujah. Do you feel like, hallelujah, making your way? Hallelujah. In spite of everything that's going on in your life, God is still in control. God still has everything in control. Do you feel like going on? Hallelujah. Do you feel like going on? Hallelujah. I come to let you know that don't give up. Don't give up because God is working it out right now. It may not seem like it. You may not see the details, but God, hallelujah, is working it out on your behalf. All you have to do is what? Believe. Hallelujah. You have to believe that God, hallelujah, is doing what he said he was going to do. Hallelujah. Manifest, yes. Things, hallelujah, will be manifest in your life. The promises of God will manifest in your life in the name of jesus well we bring you greetings once again from community refuge church here in manalapan hallelujah new jersey hallelujah under the leadership of our apostle fred rubin and first lady Teresa rubin and assistant pastor elder barry williams excuse me elder barry williams hallelujah and we thank god we thank god can you put your hands together and give god a whole right praise hallelujah glory to god hallelujah hallelujah and those that are watching hallelujah you need to put in the chat right now i feel like going on i feel like pressing my way no matter what it looks like on the outside i'm gonna press my way because i know that God has it in control in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know. I'm excited today. Hallelujah. I'm excited about God. I'm excited about what God is about to do in my life and what he's already doing in my life. Hallelujah. The excitement is here. Glory to God. Uh, if, I, I may have to do a Shabbat one of these in, the, in this time frame, but I may have to give God the glory because God is just wonderful and he's mighty in Jesus name. So at right this time, we'll get this party started as I always say, because it's always a celebration when we come into the house of the Lord, hallelujah to God. And we celebrating Jesus in the name of Jesus. We are celebrating what he is doing for us, how he has kept us over dangers seen and unseen. And we're celebrating his life, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. So at this time, we're gonna ask our elder Nicholson, he's going to come and lead us in prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And he's going to hallelujah. invite the Holy Ghost up in here, up in here. Hallelujah. Can we invite him up in here in, in the name of the Lord? Invite him into your home, glory to God. Hallelujah. Invite him in, in Jesus' name. Elder Nicholson, in Jesus' name. Amen. One said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I greet you in the name of Jesus this morning. I don't know about you, but I move and I have my being because of him. And I know within myself, I can't do anything unless he allows me to do it. Amen. Amen. I praise God. I was glad. Mother, I'm, gl I'm glad to be here today. One said, I'm glad to be in the number. One more time. Amen. I bless the Lord this morning. Shall we look to him? Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, we are so thankful. We are truly grateful to you this day. One said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And one said, giving up is not an option, amen. I come too far, too far to turn around now, amen. I'm too close, amen, to my destiny, amen. 
Amen. There has come testing and trials. They got to come. Amen. But Jesus said, Amen. You shall reap for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Amen. Oh, God, I praise you. Amen. I praise you for your word. Your word this morning. Oh, God. Oh, God, everything else is failing, oh, God. But your word is still standing, oh, God. Yeah, I pray, God, tonight, today, God, how you declare that I will never leave you. I will never leave, man. And how long is never, never, never forsake you, amen. When anybody else walk out on you, I'll still be there with you, amen. God, I praise you, amen. Because if it had not been for your word, Lord, we would be men of most miserable, amen. God, trouble, 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 trouble. Oh, God, everywhere we look, there is trouble, amen. But God, we have a we have a hiding place that we can run that in, Lord. Oh, God, I praise you this morning. God, I bless you for your blessing in our lives. And God, we ask you today, God. We didn't ask you for anything special. God, but you know what we need, Lord. God, according to your will. Let your divine will be done this day, oh God, in the lives of your children, oh God. God, I don't know what they need, but you know, because you have made us and not we ourselves, oh God. Strengthen your children, oh God. God, just come by just a little while this morning. Come by, Lord. God, let the Holy Spirit, Lord, let the power, oh God, rest upon your children this morning. Breathe on us, oh God. Breathe on us, Lord. And God, if you do this, Lord, we won't fail to praise you. We won't fail to give you all the honor this day, oh God. God, this is your day, oh God. And I pray, oh God, to rebuke the powers of darkness today, oh God. Find everything that not like you, everything that rises up against you, oh God. God, they shall, they shall, they shall be defeated, amen. Oh God, I bless you, oh God. I bless, I bless you, oh God. I don't know about anyone else, God, but I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad to be in the service one more time, amen. One more time, Lord. You allowed us, oh God, to give you praises and thanks, oh God. Help us this morning. Help us, help us, help us, oh God. To yield not, oh God, unto ourselves. But whatever we do, to acknowledge you, and you shall direct us, oh God. I pray tonight, oh God, let your will be done this day, oh God. Bless your children, one by one and name by name. Let the glory of you, God, come on in, oh God. We invite your presence, oh God. Come on in, Lord. Come on in and rest a little while. Have a seat, oh God. Stay with us just a little while, Lord. Oh God. <laughs> and I praise you for it. And I thank you for everything which you have done already and what you're going to do this day, oh God. Bless us, oh God, and make us a blessing. And God, if you do this, we won't fail to praise you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Oh, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship I am breathing. I 
won't be silent. I will always, I will always worship you. Worship you, Jesus. Come on and worship him. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Come on. Come on and worship him. As long as I am breathing, God. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing, God. Come on, I'll say it, I'm about to say it. As long as I am breathing, God. Oh God, we thank you. We 
thank you for shaking us up this morning, for waking us up this morning. It wasn't the alarm clock, hallelujah, but God shook us this morning. He said, get up. He said, get up. Get up. Get up. It's worship time. Come on. It's worship time. Come on. It's worship time. I will allow you one more time to stand before me and worship me. Come on and worship him. Come on. Give him some glory. Give him some honor. Yes, God. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, God. You didn't have to do it, God. But you did it for little old me. And since you allowed me to come and to stand before your people, hallelujah, I gotta give him some glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come on, musician. Hallelujah. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. Yes. Yes. Yes, God. Come on. Right there. Come on. Right there. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Glory to his name. We worship the chief. We honor you. We love you. We give the glory. There is no like you. Come on, see your mother say. There is no like my God. I praise him because he's been just like two. I thank him because he blessed me. One more time. One more time. One more time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yes, come on. Come on and worship him. Come on, come on, see us. Yes. Hey. Come on. Come on. He allowed us. Yeah. He allowed us. One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more one, one more one, one more time, 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 one 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 one, 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 one one one. One, 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 one more time, 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 you did it, 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 one more time, one more time.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. He did it one more time. One more time. Hallelujah to God. And you know what? I will not be silent about it. I will not <laughs> be silent about it. One more time, he healed my body. One more time, he set me free. One more time, he delivered me. One more time. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all need to pr put a praise on it right there. Right there. Because one more time, he woke me up. One more time, he set me free. One more time, he blessed my home. One more time. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. I told you I was going to get a Shabbat up in there. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Y'all need to put in the chat room. One more time, he did it for me. Hallelujah to God. One more time. One more time. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. Hey, God. Hey, hey, hey. My God, my God. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, Jesus, wonderful Savior, mighty God, Prince of Peace, everlasting Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, my deliverer, my healer. Hey, hey, God. And I will not be silent about it. I'm going to let the world know who Jesus is. Hallelujah to God. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. My God, one more time, one more time. Hallelujah, one more time in the service. Hallelujah, one more time in the house. One more time. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And the song said, I will always worship you. I will not be silent, but I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, as long as I have breath in my body, as long as I can utter a word, I will always worship you. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey, glory to God. Oh my God. Somebody said, raise the praise, raise the praise, raise the praise. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Woo, it sure feel good in here. Hallelujah. The anointing of the Lord is here. The power of God is here. In the name of the Lord. We're going to move on. We're going to ask our sister Jayla to come and read our scripture for you. If you have your Bibles, if you have your whatever form of method you have a Bible, turn to Psalms 149 in Jesus' name. Psalms 149 in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Today I will be reading Psalms 149, verses 1 through 9. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. 
Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in his glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon, upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to buy to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all his saints. Praise ye, Lord. Praise ye, the Lord. Let, let God have a blessing on this word. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. A young sister, Jayla. Great job, great job. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy to be in the house of the Lord, and he is with us this morning. Amen? Amen. I tell you, I just want to keep singing and shouting. <laughs> oh, let me just, I'm here to do announcements real quick and continue on with our service. Um, our usual schedule is posted on our Facebook page as well as our CRC website for our usual uh, weekly services. Um, but as a highlight, Tuesday, Tuesday evening, the hour of fellowship at 7 p.m. is on Zoom and Facebook Live. And Bishop will be teaching this week on the power of expectation. Amen? The power of expectation. That's Tuesday evening, 7 p.m., our fellowship. Please join us. Uh, we will continue our service next Sunday. Next Sunday is first Sunday. It's communion Sunday. Uh, we will continue our summer hours at 1030. So join us at 1030 a.m. on uh, Zoom, Facebook Live, and on YouTube. Amen, amen. We are a church that believes in the power, wonder-working, miracle-working power of prayer. We have a long list. Our prayer list has been posted on our Facebook page. We ask that we, um, you all keep those or raise up special prayers for those on the list. There are a few that we want to continue um, to raise up special prayers for as well in bereavement. Um, the, excuse me, for Bishop Michael Fields and family for the passing of his wife, Melissa Fields. For Mother Ida Harrell and the family for the passing of Bishop Harrell. For the family of Bishop William Kramer. Uh, for Sister Martha Smith's family, Smith and her family for the passing of their nephew. Uh, Sister Jeanette Garrett and family for the passing of her uncle. Um, again, we have a long list, long list. So please, please continue to keep one another in prayer as we lift those up that need special, special prayers. Amen? Amen. I believe that's it for announcements. Uh, words of encouragement from our assistant pastor, Elder Barry Williams. Praise Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. God is still good, isn't he? And he's good all the time. I just thank God for his goodness towards us. I thank God for his blessings. And I'm thanking God for his, uh, his moving in the midst of his people and in the lives of his people. I'm always encouraged uh, with the praise of praise and worship and with the songs of of praise on this morning. So I, I just thank God. And uh, so the thought that the Lord gave me, uh, bridging the mind with the spirit, bridging the mind with the spirit. And, and as I'm, I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it particularly in praise, but it will work really across all of our lives. There are things that must be in our mind. 
you know. It must be in our mind. There, sometimes we wait for the Spirit. For instance, we wait for the Spirit of the Lord to show up. And if he don't show up and touch me, then I won't move. And I think I talked to y'all about the truth before. The truth is that God is good and all the time. So then, so why are we waiting for him to show up and push us? Why don't we, uh, as Elder said, why don't we get the party started? Why, why isn't there a pre-praise and a pre a pre-dance because it needs to be in my mind because if I will bless the Lord that means it got where is it it's coming out of my mind it's something that I saw something that that happened to me so I believe saints of God that that we are being raised to another level we're being raised to another level where where praise is from the truth meaning whether I feel it or not. Worship is from the truth, whether I feel it or not. So there are sometimes some, my atmosphere is going to change. And we got an enemy that's going to make sure that the atmosphere changes because he don't want what? I know we, we, we say he don't want us to praise God, he don't want us to worship God. But what else, he really don't want us to live according to the word of God. He don't want you to act out your relationship with God. So how does he get to your relationship? He changes the atmosphere to shut you up first. You're not going to just stop walking in the truth of God. He got to do something to put a roadblock in the way. So he changes the atmosphere to shut your mouth. Once he gets you to shut your mouth, he's going to throw some, a few more things in. And after a while, your mouth is shut. Your direction is going to change. So you say, well, why is praise important? It's important because it dictates the life that I'm living. If I'm living the life, then there has to be a praise. There has to be worship. So it must be all the time. Somebody... Can y'all say just praise him all the time? Yeah, praise him all the time. I, you no, know, it's not that when you, you know, when you feel that thing, it gets down in you and you got, no, 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 that's not, that, that's the highest height of it. That's the height of praise. But what about the pre-praise the, when you're at your desk? God, I thank you. Lord, I love you. Under your breath, even you don't even open your mouth. Mm, you just, you're just so good to me. Hallelujah. Those are the praise. Those are your life praises. And so when we gather together, what do we expect? Oh, Bishop, I don't want to get in here. But what should we expect? Well, you should expect something, some level when we gather together of what you've been doing the week. You don't come here looking for something you ain't done all week. So if you ain't praised him all week, how you gonna come here and praise him? Huh? So we must bless the Lord all times. His praise must continually be in my mouth. Let Israel rejoice. This is a scripture that, that uh, was read. Let Israel rejoice in that in him that made him, let the children of the king of Zion be joyful in their king. Hallelujah. When I come in, I'm joyful in what? In my king. Not in my president, in my king. Not in my governor, in my king. Hallelujah. So let us go for it. Let us bridge that mind. Let us pray about that. And let God show us. Let him show you that I can change the atmosphere. You start. You start. You lift up a hand when you don't feel a thing. You don't feel, and 
you know, especially when somebody done messed up your attitude. Somebody done messed up your attitude and God began to challenge me because he said, well, what if I ask you to praise me now? I can't do it. Can't do it. I can't do it. But he's trying to teach me that, yes, you can. You can change it back. And that's where I am. So when it happens to me, I immediately, the Holy Spirit immediately make me think, you need to praise God because don't let that atmosphere take over. So then I lift my hand in a dry atmosphere. And then after a while, here comes the Holy Ghost. I got it back. Praise the Lord, praise saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be ready when he comes. Be ready when he comes for you. He's coming again so soon. He's coming again so soon. This week, my encouragement is for you to make every day, every minute count for God. I've been to three funerals this week, this week, and one of the deaths was sudden. She didn't expect to leave here. She had to be ready when he come. And I thought about that thing and thought about that thing. Every day, every one of our days should be like it's Easter. And we come in here praising God that he rose from the dead. Every minute of the, every second of the day that we're here on Easter, we're praising him. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. We got to praise him. We got to give him everything every day, every minute. Elder Williams said some of the things that I had writ written down to say that every time we think about him, we got to say, thank you, Lord. Whatever we're doing, thank you, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Make a way for us every minute of our day. We got to make every day count because we don't know when he's coming for us. There is no number on each, the same number on each one of us. The Lord has a number for each one of us. And we don't know when that number is. We got to be ready when he come. It impressed upon me so deeply that all the work that we should be doing, everything we should be doing, Whatever you was assigned to do on this earth, you better get ready. Hallelujah. You better get ready and start getting it done. No matter what's going on, when people change the atmosphere for you, they don't like you, they talk about you, they lie on you, they cheat, they do all kinds of stuff. It's time to praise him. It's time to Messiah. Oh God, it's time to forgive him. It's time to stop thinking about them. Because he's coming, hallelujah. He's coming, he's coming. Nothing is gonna prevent him from coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All this petty stuff that we worry about down here on this earth, hallelujah. We better leave it alone, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all, I've been to three funerals and I got one more to go. And I'm begging the Lord, the Lord, stop it, hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. No more, no more, no more. But we don't know. We don't know what God has in store. Be ready. Be ready. Make every day count. Every minute count. Every second. And you will change the atmosphere because you'll start praising him. You'll start thanking him for what he's done. I love you in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. I don't need to tell you. I don't need to encourage you. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to praise him. You don't need the music to tell you. You don't need me to tell you. God is so good. Spirit is here. His anointing is here. Oh, Lord, I say thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Oh, Lord. 
Lord, I say thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, hallelujah. I've been just in the midst of God's people, just enjoying, 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 enjoying. Praise the Lord, the, the praise team, the presenters, I tell you, the musicians, everybody in the house, you can feel God's spirit. Now, we've been in a holy convocation, uh, counting the dinner six nights and days of service, and then we've been in Revival D's home goings. And they've been celebrations. They've been celebrations. Honorary Apostle Kramer lived to the age of just about 95. And he gave his life to the Lord. He committed. Now, some of you don't remember the True Love Fellowship. Praise the Lord. It was four churches. It was Kenneth Square. And it was Pleasantville Community of Refuge. And with Pastor Drummond. Those were the four churches. And we would travel each fifth Sunday. And then we went a little further and took it to the Lift Them Up Fellowship. Praise the Lord. And for 19 years, we would come together and just enjoy the blessing. And surely we're praying for Bishop Fields and the Green family. That's Melissa's uh, maiden name, her family. Um, Mom and dad lost a daughter. And so we're praying, we're praying. But... Yesterday's service was a service. It was a worship service. It was a praise service. It was a service where things were handled quite nicely. And, of course, the Tyler service on Wednesday. And this Friday will be with the Harrells, Bishop Harrell. And he was our diocese bishop for a period of time. He was over the adjutants for a period of time. In fact, he was one of the mentors of Bishop Fields. They grew up under the Father Fields Church in Bronx. And Lady Ruben and I were talking about it. We used to minister quite a few times in the Bronx. We didn't know Melissa, but we knew Bishop as he was a young man. And we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying for him. To go through these situations, quite challenging. And even those that have gone through it in the past, right now it's difficult time for these families so keep them in prayer well zoom folks and facebook folks i feel sorry for you because you're there we're here and you can enjoy what you're watching but we can shout the victory to a greater degree <laughs> praise the lord the, the bible doesn't say for naught to forsake not to assemble yourselves together there's something about being in God's house. Praise the Lord. It, when you can't be, if there's a sickness, if there's a condition, if there's a situation, well, Zoom and Facebook, YouTube is wonderful. But when you can be in the house of the Lord, would it David say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I spoke to our prayer group today at 930, and I asked them where they've been. I was here yesterday, didn't see anybody. They, they were, must have been traveling. But we're all back together today, worshiping and praising the Lord. And yes, I don't want to neglect thanking those that watch us on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube. Your prayers mean so much. Your prayers strengthen us. Your prayers encourage us. Your prayers bless us. And you've been a support financially. Praise the Lord, and we thank you so much for that. It allows us to go forth to accomplish those things that God has given to us. Yes, our cash app, online by mail. Those here will bring our tithes and offering unto the Lord. But we're appreciative. Each time that we end our reflections or our fellowship, we make a statement. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. And that comes from our heart. It's not just something to say. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. And we're looking for the blessings of the Lord. 
Now, you heard some wonderful things today. And Lady Rubin topped it off by reminding us we have to let each day count. All the things that we heard, if we just put it off, we need to make every day count. You know, it's not communion Sunday, but we should examine ourselves at all times. Am I making each day count? Praise the Lord. Do I take weeks off? Do I take days off? Do I take months off? God's been too good to us. God has been too good to us. He deserves every day our praises, our worship, our service to others. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. And it's amazing how God gives you strength. Praise the Lord. I looked at Lady Reuben looking so pretty today. She ought to be just collapsed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We drove Thursday to Kennett Square. We're in the service Friday. And then we drove down to the D.C. area. We were in the service on Saturday and drove home. Uh, I don't know how her husband lets her do all this. I'm going to have to talk to him and, and put a stop to all this. Praise the Lord. He might not listen to me, though. But, but you know, she tells me when I tell her this kind of stuff, well, you set the example. And uh, so you just pray for both of us. Now, her mom did say this. She'd rather wear out than rust out. And so we're, we're, I don't think we got too much rust yet, but, but God's been good to us. And then Elder Williams, I need to, to let him know something. Uh, earlier service, we were outside. He was prophesying about his hair uh, turning black. Now, I'm not sure about his, but I now have a black streak in my hair. I, I, don't, I don't know where it came from. But all of a sudden, one of these sides, I got a black streak. I'm brushing it and said, where did that come from? And I guess Elder Williams was prophesying on me, not him. Praise the Lord. All right, we're just so grateful. We're so grateful just to be back in the house of the Lord. All right, I'm back. I'm going to ask the same question I typically ask. But I'm going to ask it a little bit differently. Who's ready to receive a miracle? Who's ready to receive a miracle? Who's ready to let God step into your life? Who's ready to let those words that God spoke to us become reality? He's made all these promises to us. And he's not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. So those that are ready to receive the miracle that God has for you, I want you to stand up with me. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I magnify you. I'm thanking him right now. I'm thanking him because I'm expecting a miracle. I'm not just asking. I'm expecting a miracle. Why don't you testify with me? If in fact you are expect, if in fact you truly know that not just that God is able, but he's about to work a miracle. He's about to work a miracle. He's about to work a miracle. He's about, I can feel it in my spirit. I can only tell you what I feel. But anybody feel what I feel? He's about to work a miracle. Father, in the name of your son, it's with joy that we thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, we come with thanksgiving as we make our petitions known. Lord, bring salvation to those that need it. Bring clarity of thought to those that need it. Bring healing. Bring victory. Lord, we lift our voice to thank you for the word that has made the promises to us. We say thank you. Come on and thank him with me. Come on, if you're ready to receive, if you're ready to receive what God has for you. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We say thank you. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> Second Kings, the fourth chapter. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. Come on and praise him. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Second Kings chapter four, verses one and two. Now the cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in house save a pot of oil. You have more than you realize. Listen to some wonderful, encouraging words coming from elders. And they were letting us know that God has been good and continues to be good. And he has made promises to us. He's encouraged us and strengthened us with his word. And they talked about power of one's thoughts, the power of one's thoughts, of one's expectation. I'm not sure if you realize just how powerful your thoughts are. When we make the hospital visits that we do, the spirit of the patient is so important. The person that thinks they'll never get well probably will not get well. But the one that takes a positive approach, they've opened up their system to receive the healing that God has for them. But of course, it's not just physical things, spiritual things, natural things. Anytime you go into life expecting to fail, you're going to fail. You're going to come short. Anytime you expect things to go from bad to worse, that's exactly what's going to happen. I think they call that self-fulfilling prophecy. Your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts. So important. Here's a woman that does one thing right. She goes to the man of God. But she goes not truly asking, but complaining about a situation. Complaining doesn't get you anywhere. Praise the Lord. If we go to people, they're going to just walk away from you. And God, I don't believe, hears too much of the complaints. He tells us to make our petitions known with thanksgiving. He tells us to, to pray and all of this, but it's with expectation. Doesn't the Bible say that we must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him? Here's a woman that knew that her husband was a godly man and served in a godly manner. She knew the, the positiveness about her husband 
And she also knew she had a situation that demanded God to do something. She understood that there was nothing she could do for herself. But there was a God that was able to change all things. But she went with a spirit of doubt. A defeated spirit. Not with a spirit that knows God is going to do it for me. How many times have I raised the issue? Why ask if you don't believe? Why spend time saying, Lord, 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 if you don't believe? When I asked Lady Rubin to cook this, that, and the other, I believe she's going to do it. Even if she tells me no, she's still going to do it. God takes it further than that. We go before God, he, he, he just, he's excited. He's excited when we make our request known. I don't know if you understand that or not. God enjoys you and I coming before him. Now, he already knows about every situation, but he enjoys. He's already had a way of escape made when you come into temptation, but he enjoys when we come before him. This woman had an atmosphere, an attitude of doubt and defeat, and her life was limited. This spirit impacts us both spiritually and naturally. There's folks with talent and gifts that are not being used to the fullness that God has intended for their life. Praise the Lord. They, they can't see themselves going further. But when God gives you a gift, when God gives you something to use for his will, his purpose, and you, you give back to him as you dedicate and develop it, there's no limit to what God can do in your life. Now don't get involved with somebody else's gift or someone else's assignment. But the gift and assignment God has given you, you ought to see yourself at the top of the rainbow, being used by God and blessed by God. And so she comes to the prophet. And this sad thing, she acknowledges her husband was a godly man and he served wonderful. But now they're coming to take my sons. We have all this debt. And the bondmen are going to come and make them serve to, to pay off the debt. Elijah, what is it that you want me to do? The fact that he asked that question gives us an indication of her not looking for something much to happen. Just to complain and to vent. Any, any venters in the house? How many folks get on the phone and, and just vent to somebody? That doesn't do you any good. It might make you feel good for a second or two. But then you're right back in the same situation. What is it that you want me to do, lady? He took it a little bit further because he knew that her husband was everything that she said. What do you have in your house? Listen to her response. Thy handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. I don't have enough for you to bless. I don't have enough for you to use. I don't have enough. Praise the Lord. She could not understand when you give God whatever you have, he's able to bless him. He took seven loaves and fed 4,000. Took five loaves and a couple of fish and fed 5,000. God can do anything. We've got to take what we have through prayer, through commitment, through dedication. We've got to put it into his hands. I'm trying to find a, a face of somebody that knows God wants to use you. Now, I didn't say bless. He's going to bless you. But he also wants to use you. 
He's going to bless you from the crown of your head to the sole of your head. Yeah, but he wants to use you. God has seen and placed in you something wonderful. God has placed in you not just the Holy Ghost, but gifts that come along with it. Giving you things inside of you, and you just can't sit there. You got to give it back to the Lord. And use me to your will. Use me to your purpose. Use me because I want a spirit that allows you to bless me. I want thoughts to bring an expectation. Now, when God gets ready to bless, even in our doubts, he can override them. Don't ever believe that God is limited to your faith. He wants to work through your faith. He wants to show you through your faith what can be accomplished. But when God has a plan, not even your faith that's so limited can stop him. Not even your doubts can stop him. Not even your saying that I don't have anything that can be blessed. And so the man spoke to this woman. You tell me you got just a pot of oil. I want you to do something. I want you to take your sons and start borrowing pots from all of your neighbors. And he said something that's so important. He said to that woman, as you go out to borrow those pots, don't come back with just one or two. I want you to borrow not a few. I want you to go out. Now here he's making her step out by faith. He's making her step out to a place in him in God that she had not experienced before. I want you to go out, he said, and be obedient to the word that God gave me to stay to you. And my God, she, there was something inside of her that clicked, and they went out everywhere. Can I have one of your pots? Can I borrow one of your pots? Can I borrow one of your pots? Went everywhere, and they brought pots after pots after pots after pots back to the house. And then the man of God said, now take what you call just a little pot of oil. Take what you said was not enough and start pouring into every one of those pots. And she took that little pot that she said was insignificant and started pouring, started pouring, started pouring. And don't you know, God filled every one of those pots. And I suppose if she had gotten more pots, it would have filled those. So God is telling us, you have much more than you understand. You have much more inside of you than you realize. You got to shout yes. You got to praise yes. You got to worship yes. But God has plans for you. I wish I could find somebody that knows that God has plans for you. I wish I could find somebody that knows God is going to hear your cries and answer your prayers. I wish I could find somebody that no God is going to let you put your hands on something and healing going to take place. Victory is going to take place. Miracles are going to take place. I said I wish I could find somebody. Is there somebody in the house right now that are going to change your thoughts, change your attitude, not waiting for the music to play, not waiting for you to feel something, but Lord, you promised, you promised, you promised, you promised. You told me I was more than a conqueror. You told me you'd never leave me, nor forsake me. You told me you'd bless everything I touch. Say, God has something waiting on you. God has miracles. God has blessings. God has victory. God has everything we want from him. And all we got to do is say yes to him. Can I get somebody to break loose of a I only God? Somebody take that only thing, toss it somewhere, and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in my coming in. I'm blessed in my going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed in the field. In fact, everything that I touch is blessed. My prayers are blessed. My praises are blessed. 
my joy is blessed. Oh, saints, you got more than you realize. Let me say it one more time. You got more than you realize. Get break and tell Jesus, have your way in my conversation. Have your way in my life. Have your way when I sing, when I play, when I preach. Have your way when I shout the victory, when I tell others I found a savior. And he's sweet, I know. Have your way when I tell folks you're God all by yourself. Have your way. Somebody claim victory. Somebody claim victory. Break loose from doubts. Break loose and claim all. Oh, praise him with me. Oh, hallelujah. Let me talk to you just for a little bit. Oh, hallelujah. God has given you much. I said God has given you much. And it's not just to hit the right notes on the organ or the right beat on the drum or to say the right things that sound good. But God has called you to be used for his purpose and his glory. And you and I aren't supposed to just sit around and say, only God, this little bit. How much can I get for this little bit? But when you take that little bit, This might be the essence of the message right here. When you take that little bit, Lord, use it. Lord, use it. When you take that little bit, have your way in my life. Use me. Use it. Take those little bitter fish and loaves. 4,000, 5,000. Can I get your mind to expand that you can see victory? Can I get your mind? Why do you think God spoke to you when you were on your way to hell? Not just so you can go to heaven. If that was the only reason you could just go right now. But he's kept you to be used. You have so much more. Tell somebody with me. You got so much more than you realize. God has given you so much more. I remember two of my sons were having a conversation. And the one was saying he wanted to be the the best DB in the conference. The other one said, why stop at the conference? Why not the best in the country? When you limit your thoughts, you're going to limit what you do. You're going to limit how God can use you. You're going to limit yourself. But when you say to yourself, God has called me and he's going to use me. I don't know the limits, but he's going to use me. Maybe you ought to start thinking that I want to be like Paul, caught up in the third heaven. Hear things unlawful to mention. Or Paul and Peter, uh, as you walk by, folks are healed by your shadow. And every time you pray, you're looking for a miracle. And every time you come against a hard situation, you're still praising, you're still shouting because you know God has already made a way for you. Let me ask this question as I'm trying to close.
I said, try. Any victory saints in the house? Let me see the hands of, of those that call themselves victory saints. But have you limited your victory? Have you limited? I'm saying to myself, I want more from God. I want God to use me more. And all I have to do for that to become reality is take my little that I have and put it into God's hands. Lord, have your way. Yes, it means prayer. Yes, it means word. Yes, it means consecration. Yes, it means meditation. But Lord, have your way. Don't you know Peter was just a man? Paul was just a man. Oh, Deborah was just a woman. All these great men and women, just, just people. But they gave themselves. Even Moses with all this doubt, he gave himself. Now, the Bible lets us know something that we don't always recognize. Aaron spoke for the first five or so plagues. But Moses took over. He started speaking. So even with your problems, when you give yourself to God, I want those that want God to use you to the utmost that are here, stand with me. Those on Zoom and Facebook, those that want God to use you to the utmost. Now we're going to pray, but you've got to make a commitment. A commitment is not just a statement. Anybody can make a statement. You can say whatever you want for the moment. But a commitment means what I'm supposed to do today. I'll do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it the next day. I'll do it the next day. And it's going to come to pass. Let me see the hands of those who want to make that commitment. And I believe you. You want to make it. I want to make it. But we're going to ask God as we give ourselves. And he made a promise. If we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. Father, in the name of your son, you have been so good to us. And I thank you. And I praise you. And I worship you. We're your sons and daughters. And we love you. And we appreciate so much for all that you've done for us. We come today knowing that we've been blocking a portion of our blessings because we haven't realized all that you've given to us. Lord, we make that commitment today. Those on Facebook and Zoom, why don't you just write it in? I'm committing myself to the fullness of God's will. Oh, hallelujah. We're committing ourselves. Use us. As we take that small pot of oil give it to you use us father as a lad who had a couple of fish and a few loaves use it use what we give you that which you give it to us let your anointing let your will be accomplished Lord, I say thank you. I praise you. And those here in the sanctuary, take that which you have in your tithes and offering. And some of you have already given electronically, but come just to the altar. Tap it. You've already given your tithes and offering. But those that are giving, come and lay it at the altar. 
as a statement I'm giving you me all of me giving you me Lord I say thank you Lord I say thank you Let me make a statement of confession. I think it was John C. Maxwell who, who said this about his life, and he was in his 60s when he said it. He said, I want my last years to be my best years. I want what I do for God to be greater. I want that for my life. I don't want to settle with good. Good's the enemy of excellence. And I'm realizing that God for each one of us has given us more than we realize. And as we commit ourselves to him, take that oil that we see as insignificant. And I'm looking around those that have gifts and talents and I'm seeing all have. Has something greater for you. Why don't you encourage somebody by telling God has a greater place in this will for you? God has a I'm not talking about titles and offices, I'm talking about being used by God. I'm talking about being used, having a testimony that brings folks to Christ life that leads folks to salvation come on lady Ruben help me stop you know how to help me stop father we thank you once again I thank you for these men of God these women of God these young folks when I saw the little one come up when she first came here with the London, she, she couldn't walk at all. She had all those special mechanisms. Now she's there lifting her hands unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And our scripture reading, next Sunday in the clean pool, is going to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, everybody stand. We're getting ready to go. I'm going to tell you what I want for dinner this week. <laughs> now, God never frowns, you know. Lord, I say thank you. Tuesday night, we're teaching on the power of expectation. I want to lay some thoughts out. The power or the importance. Father, we leave this place praising you, worshiping you. We leave this place excited about your goodness and about your mercy. We say thank you. Lord, we take that small pot of oil, give it to you, that it might grow, that it might grow, that it might grow. In Jesus' name. Wave it, everybody. Tell them I love you. I love you. I appreciate all that you do, Jesus. Name.